Hi guys, welcome to Chutes Online. Today, I'm going to take you through the parietal bone. So as I mentioned before, when dealing with skeletal remains, it's common to find these bones disarticulated, which means they're all separated and scattered around. So it's important to recognise individual bones in isolation. So we'll have a look at the bones of the skull separately, which should make it easier to identify these bones in isolation. We'll start off with the parietal bone. This is a paired bone, so there are two parietal bones to each skull. It articulates with several bones. First the other parietal. Bone. The frontal bone. The occipital bone, the temporal bone, and the sphenoid bone. Knowing the articulations helps you orientate the bone. Because these bones are disarticulated, it's easier to confuse one bone with another bone. And the parietal bone can get confused with Frontal bone, the occipital bone, the temporal bone, the scapula, and the innominate. And this is because all of these bones are flat bones, similar to the parietal bone itself. But you can use certain features of the bone to tell whether it will be a cranial bone or a postcranial bone. And these are the edges. If they're serrated, which means jagged, then it's most likely a cranial bone. And you can check the specific features of the bone if they're present. And this will also help you sort out the confusion. We'll go over those specific features of the parietal bone now. So we'll look at the ectocranial surface, which is the outer surface. When you are dealing with isolated bones, it's always important to first orientate yourself. Find out which is the top, which is the bottom, which is lateral and which is medial. Also, which is the outside of the bone and which is the inside of the bone. So to do that, we'll have a look at the borders. This here is the inferior border. Here we have the posterior border. Here we have the anterior border. And here we have the superior border. So the inferior border is articulating with the temporal bone. The posterior border is articulating with the occipital bone. The superior border is articulating with the other parietal bone. The anterior border is articulating with the frontal bone. And this border here is articulating with the sphenoid bone. On the superior surface, close to the sagittal suture and towards the back is a foramen called the parietal foramen. This isn't always present. But when it is, it transmits the parietal emissary vein. Which anastomoses with the superior sagittal sinus. Which allows blood to drain 
from the cerebral hemispheres of the brain. There is a raised part of the parietal bone just above this area here, and this is called the parietal eminence or BOSS. And here is where we find the temporal lines. We have the superior temporal line and the inferior temporal line. The superior temporal line is for the attachment of the temporal fascia. And the inferior temporal line is for the muscular origin of the temporalis muscle. We'll look at the endocranial surface now, which is the internal surface. First we orientate ourselves, inferior, posterior, superior, anterior. On the superior portion of the parietal bone, we have a sulcus. And this sulcus is for the superior sagittal sinus. So we call this the superior sagittal Sulcus. There are also some grooves, and these are impressions left by blood vessels, in particular the middle meningeal vessels. So we call these middle meningeal grooves. Down here we have another sulcus for another sinus called the sigmoid sinus. So we call this the sigmoid sulcus. Sulcus just means a fissure. And that about wraps it up for the parietal bone. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. Make sure you visit our website or subscribe if you want to learn more about forensic anatomy. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.